सो देर आर फोर बोर्ड्स बीइंग पॉपुलेटेड एट वन टाइम ठीक है उसके बाद में कटिंग होगा बाद में गन खत्म तो साइकिल टाइम इज अबाउट टू मिनट्स के आसपास थर्टी सेकेंड्स सो द टिपिकल कैपेसिटी वी हैव इन दिस प्लांट इज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड थर्टी थाउजेंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड पर डे इफ यू डोंट हैव मशीन लाइक दिस वी कैन गेट दैट कैन ऑफ आउटपुट एवर नमस्कार अतुल गोपाल फ्रॉम प्लग इन इंडिया एंड वेलकम बैक टू द बैटरी गुरु सीरीज Yet again with Abhay Patwardhan today, and we are here in the electronics manufacturing area of Shida Electricals, and this is where the BMS, the PDU, the telematics, all of that gets made. So, Abhay ji, uh, can you please explain to us some of the features that we have in the BMS, and then probably take us to the machines about how it gets done? So, uh, BMS, right? The word itself says that battery management system. moment a word management comes then it's more more or less abstractive and limitless so when we talk of bms typically for on board applications then there are lot of features which has to be incorporated to ensure that the battery is completely managed in all aspects all aspects means right from safety aspect to the usability aspect to the user requirement aspect to the in application performance aspect so even the connectivity aspect data aspect so it's end to end starting from a small simple resistance on the board right up to the data which goes on to the iot and the analytics and then everything so it all all that runs basically on the hardware which is pretty powerful in terms of understanding the battery and in terms of handling all the information which comes from the cells and then managing it and even the communication all every management which comes around that so this is a typically a bms uh, of a two wheeler Uh, we call it two wheeler because the bms is anyway having the same intelligence but uh, this typically a mosfet on off switch which uh, used along with it uh, for the two wheeler application so the entire set basically controls uh, the complete battery pack of a two wheeler three wheeler kind of thing uh, where the battery isolation in ca case of inadvertent uh, scenarios like low cell or high temperature low soc is even can be exercised by the bms to ensure the battery is fully protected so abey uh, i can see this uh, heat sinks over here so it, i don't see any of them in this board so why do we have heat sinks here and we don't have heat sinks here yeah so this is basically a semiconductor switch which turns on and off of the bms and uh, this has to be very very rugged enough so that uh, because most of the times its current is abused right and it should only act when it is really necessary for it to act and really threatening the battery so it has to be pretty abuse sensitive uh, abuse susceptible as well and so it has to be ruggedized ruggedized as well otherwise you end up unnecessarily having a failure of it because of thermal runaway kind of situation which is unnecessarily uh, 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 pain or uh, uh, provided it's really not necessary at that time so this is uh, well protected with the heat sinks and all so the temperatures are well controlled and the performance is more ruggedized so abe if you were to tell me what are the top three features or three things that make your bms different from others what would those be so first is uh, it is self starting type it is self powered so it is directly powered from the 72 volt up to 100 volt of the battery directly it doesn't need any other supply to take care of itself no dc to dc no nothing nothing required. so it is self sufficient in itself to do, do the protection to the battery that is thing number 1 thing number 2 it is fully communicative be it a can be it telematics bleed bluetooth be it just simple rs232 a completely i am talking of this beyond regular functionalities of cell level measurements and all which it is anyway supposed to do and then it has got algorithms which have been built on into it which also relate uh, to the battery aging side of it which will allow because we are basically into battery swapping is one of the areas which we are looking at where the battery worth assessment becomes one of the major problems to be addressed to so this also has got those algorithms where i can just by knocking into the bms i can understand what uh, is the abuse level to the battery which has happened at till that time in the entire service life so uh, abey what is interesting is the size of the bms when i visited other battery plants i probably seen bms which are as small as this and to see four ic's or four kind of boards in one particular thing means i'm sure that compared to a lot of the chinese bms that are being used by other manufacturers 
there is a lot of sophistication and intelligence which is built into these PMS. Yeah. So Atul, you rightly said, lot of components. These two together have at least, I think, uh, 750, 800 kind of components. And then managing this kind of board has to be ultimately a sophisticated process. So you see a complete Panasonic line here. Uh, it starts with uh, glue printing where the components are glued to the PCB once they are placed and then they are cured. So that before uh, passing it to the wave soldering process, they are well secured or well secured in the position. Uh, it has got a, 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 a accuracy up to I think 10 micron, right? Up to So it can actually locate any location up to 10 micron and put the glue at that place. Okay. So what's, what's this machine? And then this is a standard SMT pick and place machine, uh, two conveyor machine we have got which can dispense around 50,000 components in an hour. Uh, and we can uh, uh, solder uh, PCB as small as even for the mobile phones as well onto this machine. All the components come here in the real format and then they are picked and placed uh, onto this uh, PCB as per the coordinates which have already been programmed onto the console there. So components have been placed onto this PCB and also they have been uh, put through glue as well. So when it goes in this curing process, it will get snapped to the PCB at appropriate location. So this is a 10 zone uh, temperature heater. After this curing, right, it's basically the complete glue is uh, dried up. The component gets snapped onto the PCB uh, through this temperature zone. But when it leaves the complete chamber, it has to also brought in to the softly onto the room temperature. So the, so the 10 zones are also followed by a four cooling zones. So it's a softly brought onto the room temperature. Otherwise what happens is there is a sudden uh, thermal shock onto the PCB and then it would generate some cracks or some deformities which may not be even captured in any of the process. Yeah. That's more important. That will happen later. You will see the crack later. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very important machine. Yeah. It's the most important. Yeah. And then what happens here? This is, they are stacking it because now the the components are fully snapped onto the PCB at particular location and now it will go for the actual reflow. We have soldering. soldering course. So that PCB uh, has uh, gone through another assembly process where all these uh, components have been inserted manually as well as and now this PCB is ready to go into the uh, wave soldering machine. So they are all put onto the conveyor and then the conveyor will go into the machine where there is a a jet as well as their uh, of the uh, tin and all been put there so the complete wave soldering process will be done and now you see the pcb like uh, which has been soldered well okay and uh, now it will go for the final inspection uh, before getting it out of this premises okay the so 3d automatic optical inspection machine uh, 3D means it can even understand the third dimension of the weld, uh, welding joint or uh, the weld, uh, sorry, the soldering right. joint over there. Uh, the third dimension tells a lot of things, the shininess of it or the, uh, uh, the quality of finish, the dome shape, there are multiple standards. So this can basically assess various aspects of the PCB component being put properly, like if they have been shifted from their process or they have been well soldered, the solder is appropriate, its proper bulging has happened, the shininess is there. So the complete quality of soldering as well as uh, completeness of the soldering also is uh, done. Uh, all the BMS which we will show here, otherwise it's very difficult to manage 780 kind of component in such kind of thing and uh, any simple component getting of any small error is actually collapsing the BMS functionality in the field. So to handle such kind of things, I think this, this has to be there. So in all the BMS, each and every BMS passes through all this process and uh, then only it's cleared. So uh, once we have the 3D inspection, what happens next? Then it goes for the final testing, electrical testing. Now with 3D inspection and all, it has uh, completed all the necessary requirements of the manufacturing process and now it's clear for electrical energization. Okay, great. Right. So. That gets us to the end of the manufacturing of the BMS and so the next time we meet with our battery guru, we are going to find out how do we find out how long lived the battery is going to be. So please hold your guns and wait. Thank you very much.